John chapter number 5. Begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, after this, after what? After Jesus got back from dealing with the Samaritans, the woman at the well, went over there and she trusted in Christ, got a drink of living water, and as Brother Lambert told about his testimony after he got born again, she just started telling everybody, come see a man. They all come out to see. And many of them believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and the noble man's son got healed and God did a great work there. And after all of that, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, wither, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for allowing us to be in the Lord's house this day. Amen. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for a good report of the two jail services this morning. Lord, thank you, Father, for good singing, good fellowship time. Lord, thank you we can read the Word of God. Lord, I pray you'd bless the reading of it. And I pray that now you'd begin to speak to our hearts with that still, small voice. God, you know the need of every individual in here today. Lord, as we prayed before service, there's some who may be on the mountaintop. There's some who may be in the valley. There may be some at other points of their life in between. But God, we all stand in need of something today. God, I pray that you'd speak to every heart the very need that they have in their life. God, I pray that folks would be receptive and gladly receive the word of God. I pray, especially if there be any amongst us today lost without Christ, today would be the day the sweet Holy Spirit would trouble them, speak to them about their lost condition. Let them know the only means of salvation is through and by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless and speak, and God, folks would realize their need of help, and they'd come to the Lord for the very help that they need. I do pray this morning for Brother Ed in the hospital. You'd touch him and help him. I'm glad he was better yesterday than he was Friday. And I pray you'd continue to strengthen him and help him. I pray for Sister Mary, Lord, as we saw her yesterday. And God, I'm glad she was better yesterday than she was Thursday. And Lord, but she misses church. And God, I pray for her. And I pray you'd strengthen her and help her. And Lord, there are others, Lord, that are sick. I pray you'd touch them. Lord, thank you for bringing some back that had been traveling. And thank you, Lord, for touching some that had been sick and been out. And God, I pray that, Lord, you'd meet the needs of these folks. Uh, and Father, I'm interested now for these in attendance and those that may be watching live stream, uh, God, that you'd begin to speak and begin to deal with our hearts. Uh, God, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel now. Uh, and I pray you'd get glory and honor. And Father, we truly uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, bless now as only you can, and we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the holy and the wonderful the very wonderful name that she just sang about, the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things, uh, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things from this text. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the place of God's working. Look in verse number 2, the Bible says, Now there is at Jerusalem uh, by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Uh, 
Now can I say God is not limited. Uh, his arm is not short to where he cannot save. His ear is not inclined to where he cannot hear. Uh, God can do a work wherever God wants to do a work. Uh, God's not interested in numbers, how little or how small. Uh, nothing limits the hand of God. Uh, as we heard in Sunday school, he is God. He's able to do whatever pleases him. Uh, by the way, he does all things well. Uh, and God can do anything whenever God wants to do it. Uh, but in this text, in all of Jerusalem, we find the place of God's working. Uh, notice uh, there was a gate to enter. Uh, the Bible says now they're at Jerusalem by the sheep market, uh, a pool. Uh, can I say in order to enter the city of Jerusalem, uh, there were several gates. I don't have time to deal with them all, uh, but there was one gate called the sheep gate. Uh, and the sheep gate is where the shepherds uh, would lead their sheep through uh, uh, to get a drink from those pools. Uh, can I say you didn't find... Uh kings uh, entering at the sheep gate. Uh, you didn't find nobles uh, entering at the sheep gate. Uh, the sheep gate was left for the base uh, or the off scourer. Uh, uh, shepherds weren't highly looked upon. Uh, uh, but we find the great shepherd, uh, the good shepherd, uh, the chief shepherd, uh, the king of kings, uh, lord of lords, uh, the most noble of the noblest. Uh, he came through the sheep gate uh, uh, to get to Jerusalem. Uh, friend, I'm glad uh, He's no respecter of persons. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, hey, he came to the off scour. Uh, hey, we had no right uh, to the things of God. Uh, we had no right to the promises of Abraham. Uh, but God made a way. Uh, Roll Gentile dogs like you and I uh, uh, could come to him. Uh, hey, but you had to enter the gate. Uh, and he entered that sheep gate. Uh, there is a gate to enter. Jesus said, said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, Jesus said in John 10, He is the door of the sheep. Uh, hey, He's the only way uh, to find salvation. We see the place of God's working. There's a gate tenor. Notice the gift. Uh, to embrace. Uh, we find he not only came into the sheep market, uh, uh, but he also says, uh, uh, which is called by, in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda. My dear friends, that uh, term Bethesda, that name Bethesda means the house of mercy. Uh, listen, uh, I'm here to, and glad to report unto you uh, that God has plenteous mercy. Uh, uh, God has never run out of mercy. Uh, God's got mercy for what you need today. Uh, uh, you don't deserve his mercy, uh, but you can have his mercy. Uh, but listen, uh, you've got to embrace his mercy. Uh, you can sit there on a pew and beat yourself up uh, all day long and tell yourself you're not worthy all day long. Let me help you. You're not. Uh, but God has something that goes beyond our unworthiness. Uh, it's called mercy. Uh, and it's mercy for you and mercy for me. Uh, it is a gift from God uh, uh, to give unto us what we do not deserve uh, and what we could not earn uh, and the gift has to be embraced uh, and you can receive God's mercy today my friend uh, we see the place of God's working there's a gate to enter a gift to embrace but I'm thankful to report that there is grace extended notice that it mentions in the last part of verse 2 uh, having five porches Anytime you look in the Word of God and you find the number five, it always represents God's grace. Uh Hey, God's richness, uh, richness at Christ's expense. Uh, we did not deserve God's grace. Uh, it's the unmerited favor of God. Uh, you couldn't earn it. If you lived a million lifetimes and did nothing but good deeds all your lifetimes, you couldn't buy one gold brick in the celestial city of God, uh, let alone uh, earn your way into heaven. Uh, it took the work of Calvary. Uh, it took the shedding of the blood of the darling Son of God on the cross of Calvary. Uh, it took Him bleeding and dying was buried and rose again according to the scriptures uh, uh, to make a way uh, I'm here to tell you grace has been extended uh, there's grace for you and grace for me uh, there's saving grace there's living grace there's even dying grace uh, but grace is available and extended to you and I we see the place of God's working God has a place where you can enter and you can find mercy and grace Thanks be unto God for the place of God's working. But notice the people needing God's working. 
Verse number 3 said, In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, and withered. Bunch of folks, a great multitude that needed help. His brother Lambert brought out in Sunday school, I'm glad God's able to help all of us at the same time. Mm. God's on the throne and God is doing work across this globe. It blows our mind that God can even look at us and do our, our little deed, but he's dealing with everybody in the world. God's feeding everybody, feeding everything, keeping this earth spinning. He's got it all under control. But every person in here today, you can get help from God. Because hmm? uh, He loves you more than you know what love is. Uh, there's people needing God's working. Notice the process of God's working in verse number 4. It said, For an angel went down a certain season into the, the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made hold of whatsoever disease he had. Can I say that's a picture of how God uses a process of working today. Now he doesn't use an angel. Matter of fact, let me just say this. Let me get a pet peeve off my shoulder. What's the big deal about angels? I mean, people write books about angels, and people put bumper stickers on their car, angels watching over me. Well, if an angel's watching over you, you wouldn't tell you to put that $2 bumper sticker on that $50,000 car. Junk up your car, ruin your paint job. Huh? People all the time, all been out of shape about angels. Huh? They buy little trinkets called angels and put them on their knickknack shelves and everything. It's all about angels. All about. Why would I be concerned about angels when I got the darling Son of God living inside of me? Yeah, I'm all interested in Him and what He can do for me. And by the way, yeah, if you got a bumper sticker saying God's your co-pilot, uh, get out of the seat and give Him the pilot seat because you're doing a horrible job, huh? Yeah. Driving 55 in the fast lane with your turn signal on. Get out of the way. But also in our lives, we're not doing a good job. We need to let the Lord pilot our ship. Um, but this is a picture. It literally happened back in those days. Every once in a while, God would send an angel trouble water. Whoever got in that water first was the only one who got help. But can I say, God. Today, in his process of working, uses the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will take that precious word of God and begin to trouble our waters. Begin to show us we have a need. But the difference is, uh, not only the first one who recognizes the troubled water can get in, Anybody whose waters are troubled can get in. Uh, hey, uh, and even if you're saved, uh, so we still need our waters troubled. Uh, uh, we might need healing today. Uh, we might, might need some mental help today. Uh, we might need some spiritual strength today. Uh, I don't know what you need, but the Holy Ghost does. Uh, and He knows how to trouble us uh, and get us to the place uh, where we'll stop looking around and we'll look up and ask for help. Uh, we see the process of God's working. Notice, if you will, the painful one outside of God's working. Look at verse number 5. And a certain man. Now, we don't know his name, but there was a certain man. It amazes me. People like to correct the Bible, always try to use these things as metaphors and pictures and wasn't really, didn't really happen, just like with the prodigal son. And you go, go look, it said a certain man. Here it says a certain man. Just like uh, uh, the rich man died and went to hell, it said a certain man. Jesus didn't call him by name, but when he said a certain man, he meant a certain man. Right. Mm -hmm. A certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Lord have mercy. Yeah. He'd been laying there next to those pools for 38 years. Had a problem. Some of you have come in here this morning. You may be saved, you may be lost, but you have had a problem for a long time. And if you're not careful, you'll have the problem so long, you'll get used to the problem. And you'll think there's no help for your problem. Well, 
as long as Jesus is Lord, and that'll be forever, there is help for your problem. Uh, now notice, if you will, the possibility of God's working. Look at verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had not been now a long time in that case. By the way, Jesus knows how long you've been in your case, too. I'm glad he knows. Hmm? He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now notice Jesus didn't ask this man how long he'd had the problem. Jesus didn't even really ask him what his problem was. Jesus already knew both those things. Jesus didn't ask him if he wanted help to get to the pool. Jesus asked him a simple question. Wilt thou be made whole? That word whole means complete. There was a deficiency in his life. He says, you want to be completed? It means entire. There was something broken in his life. He said, you want to be fixed? You want to be made entirely whole? It means not lacking anything. This morning you might have come in thinking, well, I'm lacking some faith. I'm lacking this in my life. I might be here thinking, I'm lacking something in my heart. I don't even know what it is. That's what Brother Lambert said in Sunday school. Well, uh, uh, well what you're missing is him. Amen. Would you be made whole today? Hmm. It means not lacking anything. It means not defective. Can I say, every one of us are defective. We all were defiled by sin. Hmm? But those of us in Christ do not have that defect anymore. Because that inner man, according to 1 John 5, sinneth not. He doesn't sin. Jesus has already fixed it. Now, we're still living in the flesh, but that's soon to be taken care of too. Huh? When you're in Christ, you're not defective anymore. Now, the sorry, no good devil will try and tell you you're still defective. And can I say some sorry, no good preachers will still try and tell you you're defective. Can I say in Christ, I've been made whole. And he asked this question. There's the possibility of God's working right here. He said, wilt thou be made whole? And this morning, with God's help, I want to preach on this thought. Wilt thou? Wilt thou? Well, I'm preaching this morning. I'm not preaching to your neighbor. I'm not preaching to somebody sitting behind you. I'm not preaching to somebody sitting on the other side. I want you personally to answer the question of Jesus. Wilt thou? Wilt thou? Can I say, first of all, wilt thou be redeemed? If you're here today and you're not saved, or if you're not sure you're not, not saved, uh, Wilt thou be redeemed? you want some sureness of that? Yeah. Are you tired of being lost? Are you tired of not having hope? Are you tired of being troubled about uh, 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 what's on the other side of death? Are you tired of uh, uh, seeing other people with joy and you never having joy? Wilt thou be redeemed? Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus was saying that to one of the most religious men of his day. Religion won't save you. Baptism won't save you. Church membership won't save you. Carrying a King James Bible won't save you. Being a Baptist won't save you. But Jesus will save you. You must be born again. Uh, he he went on to say in chapter uh, in verse 16 you all know it for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world uh, but that the world through him might be saved uh, he went on to uh, use Paul to write Romans 10 13 for whosoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved uh, wilt thou be redeemed uh, the Lord said 
said, whosoever will, uh, that includes you. Uh, you're uh, of that one uh, who is in the possibility of God's working today. Uh, God wants to save you uh, and change your life. Uh, he wants to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, he wants to make you a citizen of heaven. Uh, he wants to give you eternal life. Uh, he wants to bless you beyond your blessings thought process. Uh, uh, he wants uh, to make you uh, a member of God's family today. Wilt thou be redeemed? Mm, see, you have to answer that question. I'm glad on the third Saturday night in March 1974, I got redeemed. Changed my life. Changed my eternity. Because that night, uh, I didn't hear the preacher no more. Somebody else was speaking to me. And it was the same Lord that was speaking to that fellow there in John chapter 5. And he might as well, Brother Phil said, wilt thou? And that night, uh, I'd have jumped over 500 people or everybody in Cincinnati to get to where the Lord was because uh, I'd had enough of me and wanted everything he had for me. He saved me and changed me. He'll do that for you. Wilt thou be redeemed? Let me ask you this question. Wilt thou? Wilt thou be restored? Listen, I'd love to say once you get saved, nothing bad's ever going to happen to you. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, and sometimes bad things happen to God's people. And can I say sometimes bad things happen in some of the places you'd never think would happen? You know, I do not go in certain parts of Cincinnati at night with $100 bills wrapped around my neck. Because there's going to be something bad happen to me. Uh, but sometimes it's not those places, because we know about them places. Sometimes you can be in the church house and something bad happen to you. Sometimes it can be in your own home, something bad happen to you. Sometimes even your own family. Something bad can happen to you. And if you're not careful, you'll let that circumstance affect your spirituality. You don't blame God, but sometimes you're human, your mind wonders, God, why? And instead of just trusting the hand of God, we withdraw a little bit. Oh, we still read our Bibles, we still pray, we still come to church. But something's happened. If you're not careful, you'll start dwelling in that place. And then you might even get a little bitter. This morning, wilt thou be restored? You're tired of missing his touch. Let me help you something. Jesus never did anything bad to you. So if God loved me, why didn't he stop that from happening? Listen to me. Listen to me well. Everything that happens in this world that is evil or bad happened because of what Adam and Eve did. If God stepped in to stop something bad from happening to me or you, he'd have to step in and stop something bad from happening to everybody. Sin is running its course. The earth is out of course, the psalmist said. Sin is running its course, and it's about ready to come to the point where the king of kings is going to come. When the Prince of Peace comes, uh, literally to the second time, the second coming back to this earth, uh, and he rules and reigns from Jerusalem, uh, he's going to put an end to all the bad things for a little while. And then one day he's going to put an end to all of it. But make no mistake, it's not because of a lack of God's love. God demonstrated his love on Calvary when he let the worst of the worst happen to himself, that he could redeem us from hell and they give us a peace that passes all understanding even in the bad times Amen. this morning you substituted his peace for a pity party wilt thou be restored today you miss the joy of his salvation right. mm -mm. the bible says rejoice evermore but you've not been rejoicing because you're dwelling 
wilt thou be restored? Can I say this this morning? Wilt thou be wrapped? Not W-R-A-P-P-E-D. R-A-P-T. The word we get rapture from. The word wrapped means ignited. Wilt thou be ignited today? Will you once again become excited about being saved? Will you once again become enthusiastic that Jesus is coming soon? Would you once again get to the place you would become eager again for the things of God? Would you, wilt thou, be wrapped? Hmm? See, if we're not careful, we let little things start slipping in. Before long, they get bigger. And before long, we're just not excited about the things of God anymore. Here's how you can tell. Here's the litmus test. If you can get excited about other things, but you can't get excited about coming to church, you need to be ignited today. Hmm? I've got good news. The Holy Ghost is a good igniter. Wilt thou be wrapped? Let me ask you this. Will thou be relieved today? You see, the Lord told us to take up our cross and follow Him. But He also said that His burden is light and His yoke is easy. And if you study that yoking up with the Lord, and you study out what they did when they trained a new baby or young oxen, they'd put him with an older oxen that was much bigger. And what happened is the older oxen uh, bore all the load, and the younger one just learned how to travel with the older one. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the Lord does want us to take up our cross, but then he bears us and our cross. Uh, hey, uh, but so many of you, uh, instead of coming and putting it at Jesus' feet. Uh, you're bearing things you have no business bearing. Uh, uh, you're uh, bearing guilt. Uh, hey, there is now therefore no condemnation in them that walk after the Spirit. Uh, listen, you're bearing shame. Uh, you're bearing uh, uh, your uh, make-up uh, unworthiness. You're bearing all kinds of things this morning from your past. Uh, hey, uh, wilt thou be relieved today? Aren't you worn out? Aren't Aren't you tired of carrying it? Uh, why don't you come and give it to the Lord? Uh, he's well able to handle it, friend. Uh, and he'll handle you as well. Uh, wilt thou be relieved? Some of God's people are so worn out because you're carrying things you were never meant to carry. Mm. Let me ask you this. Will thou be refortified? Uh, I don't know if you all pay any attention to what's going on in Israel. It's only by the grace of God that's not going on here. Yeah. Right. Somebody needs to get a hold of the Lord. Yeah. Somebody needs to get some strength of God back. Oh, will you be refortified in the fight? Hmm. The supplies are coming from heaven, but we're not picking them up. Can I say this without? Be right. A lot of God's people have gotten used to not being right with God. And see, as human beings, we have this innate ability of self-justification. And the longer we're not right with God, the more we can justify not being right with God. Hmm. Deep down inside, you know he's not right. You know he's not pleased with you. Wilt thou be right in spirit today? In the spirit of God? Wilt thou be right in your standing with God today? Friend, I, I'm looking around. The trumpet's about to blow. You know before all nations turn on Israel and, and Matthew 24 comes into play, the church is out of here seven years before that. And if you can't see everything's a winding and you're working against Israel right now, the trumpet's about to blow. Are you, are you in right standing with God? You're about to meet Him. Hmm. Wilt thou be right in the sight of God? Amen. When He looks across the earth, looking for a man to stand in the gap, make up the hedge, I hope He looks at me and says, there's one. Yeah. When he looks at you, He's saying, there's one. 
Huh? Wilt thou be my, made right? Now know some things I'll be done. I want you to notice first of all the defense for this fellow's condition. Look in verse number 7. Now the Lord just asked him, Wilt thou be made whole? That's pretty simple. But look at verse 7. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another stepping down before me. He starts making an excuse why he's not been made whole. Can I say, there's too many people sitting on God's pews in God's churches, listening to God's word, making an excuse for not being where God would have them to be. Jesus didn't ask him anything about somebody helping him getting him to a pool. Jesus don't even mention the pool. Matter of fact, looking at Jesus, he don't even see the pool. He sees this fella in this fella's need, and he said, well, thou be made whole. And then this guy starts offering up a defense, an excuse why he's not been made whole. Some of you have done that while I've been preaching. God's tried to speak to your heart, and you're making some kind of excuse why you can't get where you need to be today. The Lord said, wilt thou? And you're going, nope, can't. We see the defense for his condition. If you will, notice the disparaging command. Look what happens in verse number 8. Jesus saith unto him, rise. This guy's been laying on that bed who knows how long, making up his mind he can't get up out of the bed, and Jesus is asking him to do what he don't think he can do. That's very disparaging. Hmm? Now, Brother Clint, Jesus will never ask you of anything you can't do. But in your mind, if you've convinced yourself you can't, you never will. Hmm? It's what happens. Kinsey, I appreciate you. But if you're not careful, you'll let the devil, the world, the flesh talk you out of what you can do for Jesus. Jesus didn't give him a hard command. He just said, rise. Now, Miss Jackie, this man in his own strength probably couldn't rise. But in the strength of Jesus, he could. But it's a disparaging command. You see, today, if I ask you if you gave more money in the offering, God would bless you. Oh, you'd give more money. But if I ask you, wilt thou come and get right with God? Oh, that's too hard. Look how many people's here. Look how many people was there. It's a disparaging command. Notice the displacing comfort. Look at verse number 8 again. He says, rise, take up thy bed. Now see, this is a displacing comfort because Jesus is asking him to take up the very thing that he has depended on for 38 years. You know why some people never get help, Miss Marcy? They don't want to rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah. Do you ever notice a little kid not really hurt, but Mama put a Band-Aid on it and everything's good? Until yeah. right. yeah. Mama goes to take the Band-Aid off. Oh, no, 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 Mama, I'm hurt. I, don't know, I got that cut. I got this. I got that. Uh, that's where some of you are. No, Lord, no, Lord, not that. Don't take that Band-Aid off. Uh, I've been dependent on that Band-Aid for 38 years. That Band-Aid's what's helping me. No, it's not. That bed's what's kept him from getting help. And there's something that has kept you from getting help. You've got to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to get rid of that Band-Aid. You've got to get out of that complacency, or you'll never get the help the Lord wants for you. We see that there's a disparaging command, a displacing comfort, but notice the directive to change. Look what he says. Verse 8, rise. Take up thy bed and walk. Now this guy's not been able to do any of this. But the Lord's very distinct and he gives, a, gives him a directive. His directive is to change what you are to what you should be and what you can be. Walk. He didn't tell him to run a marathon. He told him to walk. Hmm? Listen, again, 
There's a lot of things we can't do, but there are some things we can do, and when God asks us to do it, we just need to do it. Wilt thou? Now listen, I'm about done. He directed him to change. Preachers can get away with cussing in the pulpit more than they can gas people to change from the pulpit. We get set in our ways, and we don't want to change. We think we know what's best. I've been sitting in this same pew for 38 years. I've been in this same place for 38 years. I've been in the same position. I've had this same problem. I can handle it. That's your problem. Today, the Lord says, Wilt thou? You, you must make a choice. I'm reminded what Joshua in Joshua 24, the Bible said in verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. That's very important. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And it's, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites uh, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Today you must make a choice, wilt thou? choose you this day wilt thou be any of those things that we preached on see wilt thou trust and obey look at verse number 9 we'll be done and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the sabbath can I say when the man look beyond his reason for laying in that bed and believe what Jesus said. Immediately, he received the strength he needed to walk and he took up that bed that had been his excuse and he walked away with it. This morning, wilt thou put your faith in the Lord and watch him do for you what you cannot do for yourself? Wilt thou? Again, I'm not talking to somebody sitting over on the other side of the building or somebody sitting next I'm talking about you. If God's put his finger on something in your life, wilt thou? Are you tired of it? Wilt thou get up and leave that stinking bed? You know what smells? has been laying there 38 years. Amen. Wilt thou put your faith in Jesus and start walking for him? You can today. The choice is yours. Some are already coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song. Wilt thou put your... Are you tired of spiraling out of control? You tired of dealing with that mess? You tired of being lost? Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Wilt thou be redeemed? Wilt thou receive some help? Wilt thou put your faith in the Lord? Friend, you can have some help today. Why wouldn't you get help? Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for these that have already come. Now, Father, bless this time of invitation. God, help folks to be sensitive and serious to the wooing of the Holy Spirit. God, if somebody's lost, help them come and trust Christ. And God, certainly help your people. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.